gonna pray again. I hope that's cool. Y'all probably like, dang, they pray a lot in this church. Yeah, <laughs> we like to pray. I feel like God's got better things to say than I do. I, I just, I kind of got a feeling <laughs> like, like he probably knows a little more than I do. I know, I know that's crazy. My wife's probably blown away right now. She's like, no way, no way. <laughs> Father, Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I take control of this atmosphere with your presence. Holy Spirit, everything has to submit to your authority right now. The things trying to distract, the things trying to take away, the things trying to get your people distracted so they can't receive the word today in the name of Jesus, we command that to leave. Father, we pray depression would be lifted right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, that there be clarity in each mind to receive, Lord, on every level what you want to speak to us today. God, that we would receive your word. God, that we would receive your correction. God, and we receive your love. Father, I pray you shield these people from my opinion and that they would only hear and remember and see your truth. In Jesus' name. Everybody said, amen. Man, I am so glad you guys decided to come back for part two of this series. Part one, I thought I might have stepped on some of your toes really hard. Some of you are like, I wasn't here for part one. Well, good. Your toes are nice and ready to be stepped on. It's good. It's good. I love talking about marriage. I love talking about relationships. I love talking about friendship. I love talking about love in general. See, that, in, that, that takes so many more areas than just marriage. So I want you to understand, we are, yes, this series is based on marriage, but I want you to understand, if you're single in here, like we said last week, there ain't nothing wrong with you, all right? You're, you're good, okay? You're, you're complete and whole in Jesus. You don't need another person to make you complete, all right? You are complete and whole in Jesus, but I want you to know, there's going to be stuff for you today, all right? So don't miss it. Don't fall asleep on me being like, well, I'm not married, so I guess I just tune out now. Please don't do that, okay? Because for one, your future spouse, okay, will really thank you if you, you listen up today, okay? So last week we talked about part one. We talked about we're in a series called Till Death Do Us Part, and we're talking about things that if you allow to die in your relationships, then your relationships will die. The first one we talked about was intimacy. We talked about how we need intimacy, that God created us to crave and to want intimacy. And we talked about how when we don't receive that intimacy, whether it's from community, whether it's from family, whether it's from a relationship, we will then seek it in negative ways and we will use things like sex and other kind of avenues to try to fill that void because we need intimacy. We will literally die without intimacy. We need it. We need community. Now, sometimes we need to take a break from those kind of things, right? So any of my uh, recluses in here, any of my, uh, what, what is it, um, what's, what's the thing, I'm an, an introvert, that's it. I'm thinking like, I'm an extrovert, so that means introvert, introvert. You have an introvert in here, you think, this is all the people time I can really take. That's good, though. You need it. You need it, okay? So today, we're going to be talking about another very important thing that if you let die, your relationship will die. And that little, little thing is called communication, Communication is monumental. It is so important. And I personally like this subject, you know, because I've experienced firsthand what good communication can do. And I've experienced firsthand what bad communication can do. I've been the guy that said the wrong word at the wrong time. Any, any of, my, of my dudes in here, you feel me? Oh, yes, good. Praise God, I'm not alone. You know, your wife's upset. She comes in, she's yelling, and you just said, oh, you'll be fine. Or, why are you acting so crazy? Yeah, that's a fun one. Try that one out. <laughs> See how that just implodes your marriage. Why are you acting so crazy? Don't call me that night. It's like, well, you didn't really back up the point there that you weren't. But okay, that's fine. <laughs> right, I'm taking a step back. Most marriages and relationships end due to unmet expectations. Due to unmet expectation. Did you know when you get married, you come into a relationship, you have an expectation? Do you know that? We all do. We all come into something with an expectation. And what upsets us is when those expectations are not met. And I've got some real sobering news for you today. A lot of your expectations, especially when coming into marriage, they're unrealistic. They're unrealistic. You come in with all these expectations, and the thing is, is you never talk about it. You never tell him about it. You never tell her about it. You just expect it to happen like magic. Well, we got married, so now... She's going to make sure to take care of all the dishes and all the laundry and make sure the house is clean when I get home. Right? <laughs> oh, man, that's awesome. You're like, yeah, maybe for the first week. <laughs> Welcome to real life. <laughs> but see, if we don't communicate those expectations, one, 
the other person will not know. Two, somebody like me doing your marriage counseling can't tell you that's unrealistic. Let me, let me tell you how married life is really going to work, okay? Are you ready? See, I, I got a good friend in here. He plays the guitar. His name's Christian Cantu, and he recently got engaged to his, fian- uh, yeah, to his now fiance, Courtney, and they're getting married soon, and I'm so excited for them. They came over to our house and talked to us about it, and they told us, you know, hey, we want to get married, and I said, great, it's time for marriage counseling right now here at the table. So I began to just lay it out. You know, watch out for this, that kind of stuff. You know, make sure you communicate. We said all these kind of things, but I first asked him, I said, Christian, what do you expect from Courtney when she's your wife? And he was like, oh, I don't don't know. (laughs) know? (laughs) Well, you put me on the spot, bro, right? Why? It's important to communicate your expectations because if you don't, the other person is not going to know. See, ladies, listen to me, please. And I stressed this last week. As men, we cannot read your mind. We can't. Okay? We can't do it. I know. I know. We can't do it. All right? So it's really, it's really helpful when you just say, honey, this is what I need. And I say, baby, whatever you need, I'm going to do it. Right? Whatever you need. I know I got some good guys in here. You say that. You say, honey, whatever you need, I'm going to take care of it. You know, and I always tell Sydney, I'm like, when I told you I'd do anything for you, I meant like die for you fighting a dragon or like fighting a bad guy, right? I didn't so much mean like I'm going to do the dishes every night. That actually wasn't. I was thinking like big epic things, right? Like, shh, get away from my woman, right? Yeah. But anyway, I'll probably catch something for that later, but that's cool. It's important to talk and communicate your expectations. Don't assume the other person just knows, especially if that person is a male. We don't know. We have no idea. Assuming is the lowest form of knowledge. Stop assuming in your relationships. Just stop. It's not helping anybody. You're hurting your relationships, your friendships, your, your, your marriage, you know, your community here at church. Stop assuming. See, we do that a lot. We come to church and we just assume everybody's okay. And then one day we hear somebody's in the hospital because they tried to kill themselves. And we're like, I thought they were fine. You assumed they were fine. You couldn't have been bothered to stop for a moment and say, hey, are you really okay? Because you seem kind of off. Can I pray? Can can I come over? Can I I help? See, we got to stop assuming. And we got to start asking and communicating. See, communication is key. For the longest time, Sydney and I, when we were first married, she would do this thing, babe, I love you, but I'm throwing us under the bus a lot today. <laughs> love you. Um, first couple years of our marriage, Sydney would communicate with me via her behavior and not her words. Okay, so let me explain what that looks like. If I wasn't paying enough attention to my lovely, beautiful wife, she would then cause an argument to happen so then we could make up because she wanted attention. <laughs> Okay, so she would fake, I'm leaving, right? She'd pack a bag. She'd get it all packed. And she would do this several times, and I would do the the, the husband thing to do, right? You chase them down the end of the parking lot. You're like, no, please, babe, don't go. I'm an idiot. I'm so stupid. I'm sorry, right? And we come back inside, and as soon as we walk back in, it was like nothing happened. Okay. I said, you want to watch a movie? Uh, Sure. (laughs) Right? So I began to notice, the more and more she did this, I began to notice she started packing things that didn't make sense like my clothes, or towels. I'm like, where are you going? Are you going to the beach? What are you doing? Right? So one time I called her bluff and I didn't go after her. And that was a mistake. She was really upset. But then I learned, I learned that she didn't actually want that. What she was really trying to communicate to me was I needed to spend more time with her. And the good news is that she eventually learned that all she has to do is say that. Um, we have this saying, she says, I call marriage. And when she says that, I'm like, oh, well, great, I'm done. Everything I'm doing right now, i got to sit down. <laughs> right? Because biblically, she knows that, that's, that's something that's very fair. She can say, I call marriage right now. And I say, okay. Close everything. Get rid of the phone. Right? Put everything down. Hey, hey, I got a note. No, you don't. You don't got a note. Goodbye. <laughs> right? She learned, though, if she communicates, I will do what she needs. But she has to communicate. Same thing with me. I wouldn't communicate in moments when I would get upset about something. She would do something, and I wouldn't let her know. I wouldn't say, babe, that really bothers me. Like, it seriously is like pushing me over the edge of my sanity. Can you please stop? I wouldn't say that. Instead, I'd just be like, okay. Right? I'll fix it. All right? And then you come home, and it happens again. Okay. I'll fix it. (laughs) Right? And eventually, about a week later, you're like, okay! I can't take it anymore! Why don't you care about me? 
She's like, and of course, Sydney, why are you yelling? Oh, my God. That's either the one reaction is she's hurt or she's, she's mean. When Sydney gets scared, she gets mean. She, she bows up. What? You want to fight me? I know, I know, you can't picture it, but she can get pretty ruthless, all right? She, she can get after it. So we don't want to communicate by our behaviors, and we want to communicate when something is wrong in that moment, because if you don't, what happens is it begins to store up, and then eventually you blow up all over that person, and you say words that hurt them, and that damage them, and that damage your relationship, that damage your marriage. See, that's why it's so important to communicate. Because if not, that stuff's going to build up and it's eventually going to come out in some way. It's going to come out and normally it's negative. So we have to communicate. And this is something I ask somebody all the time. You got to understand, when you are married, you are one flesh. You're becoming one person. So when you tear down your spouse, you are tearing down yourself. When you talk bad about your spouse to your friends, just, just go ahead and tell them, I'm a terrible husband. Let me let you know up front because all I'm doing is tearing myself down. I'm bad at this. <laughs> I mean, you might as well be honest because that's what you're doing. You're tearing down yourself. So have you had enough of that? Are you tired of tearing down yourself? See, a lot of times when you go and you vent, and I'm not even talking about you going and you're getting counsel. You know, I've got some friends that come to me, other, other dudes in my life that come and they say, man, I'm struggling with my marriage right now. They know what they're going to hear. I'm going to let them vent and then I'm going to say, you're not loving your wife good enough. And they're like, but hold on, did you hear what I said? She's doing this, this, this. And I said, yeah, and I know. And the answer is you need to love your wife better. I, I, okay. <laughs> Why? That's the truth. Tell me something that it won't fix. When you love your wife better, when you declare good things over her, when you support her. I'm just telling you guys, I'm giving you great advice right now. Love your wife better. And she'll start to respect you more. See, that's the thing when we're talking about this. We need to communicate. We need to use our words. That's something you'll hear a lot right now in our house. Let's use our words. We're not, we're not using our words. No, we're breaking furniture. We're not using our words. Speak! Why? Because it's important to communicate. It's got to come out of your mouth. Use your words. If you allow communication to die in your marriage, your marriage will die. I love this. Some people talk to you in their free time. Others will free their time to talk to you. Be the second person in your relationship. Free your time to talk. Listen, and guys, I'm going to beat up on you a little bit because I know we're bad at this. When your wife is just talking and you're kind of thinking like, this is kind of incoherent. Uh, what is she talking about? She is just rambling on. I don't really care. I don't really know. She needs to talk. Okay. She might be going through something else that you're not picking up on right now, but you need to listen and you need to communicate because she needs to talk. Okay, she needs it. So look, you might not be interested, but boy, you better act interested. You say, oh, honey, wow. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. No way, right? Just don't sound sarcastic, okay? Because that, that never helps. <laughs> I have a problem with that sometimes. <laughs> Here's the truth for you. Your marriage is being carried somewhere it's going somewhere. I want you to understand that. It's always moving. It's going somewhere. And your words direct where it goes. The words you say direct your marriage. It steers it. It guides it. So you could be driving it and steering it towards purpose and towards love. Or you could be steering it to hopelessness and misery. And it's about what you're saying. There are power in your words. There is power in how you talk to one another. It will drag. Let, me, let me show you in Scripture, James 3, 4 through 5, one of the most challenging Scriptures in James. It says, and a small rudder makes a huge ship turn wherever the pilot chooses to go, even though the winds are strong. In the same way, the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches, but a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. You ever set fire to your marriage by words you said? Yeah, probably. I know I have. Right? You say things you regret, and then you got to go back. And all of a sudden, you've burned down half the house. <laughs> You're like, what? Oh, wow. A lot of damage here. <laughs> Wish I wouldn't have said that. <laughs> you know, too, right? Guys, I know you know. Like, I've experienced it. I've said something and been like, oh, come back. <laughs> it's all over her face, too. You know. It's just like, oh, my God. <laughs> Lord, help me. <laughs> right? Jesus. Jesus, come quickly. Lord, I need you. 
So we decide, we choose where to go. Even in storms, we can still direct the ship with our words. Even when things are going crazy around your life, the kids are melting down, everything's going wrong, you still have control over the direction of your marriage. You still have control. You can still direct it in the right path, in the right direction, in the direction of love, in the direction of hope. And this isn't just for marriages, in your friendships, in all your relationships. Communication is so huge because you steer how that relationship is going to work. Be a good friend. Okay, be a good friend. Be a friend that shows up. Be a friend that says the hard truths, but they say them in love. And they show up in support when they're needed. All right, be a good friend. Steer the way your relationship is going with your words. The words you say, as well as the words you don't say. Guys, this is for you again. As well as the words you don't say affect your relationships. As it says in Proverbs, our words kill, our words give life, and we get to choose. God has given us a powerful voice, and it can do a lot of damage if we aren't mindful of the words that we declare over each other or the words that we never say. It's important to note that the first thing that God does when he makes creation is he what? Speaks. Words are powerful. Jesus spoke a curse over the tree that wasn't producing fruit. And what did it do? It died. Why? Because there are power in our words. We were created in the image of God. He gave us the ability to have a voice, to have impact. When we declare words over situations, we have power in our words. It's important you understand that and you know how to use it. Because just like with a gun, if you don't know how to use it and you get a hold of one, you can do a lot of damage really fast. And you'll hurt yourself, you'll hurt people you love and you care about just because you didn't know. So now you know. Your words hold a lot of power. They carry a lot of weight. The times you feel like not talking are the times you need to push through and you need to communicate. Everybody in here that's married, you know what I'm talking about. There are moments you get in an argument. There are moments when you're tired. There are moments when you're fighting and it seems like it's never ending and you just want to go to bed and you don't want to resolve it and you think, oh, I'll just, we'll just take care of it tomorrow. Do not do that. As long as it takes, work it out. When you don't want to talk, talk. Talk. There were times I remember me and Sydney would get in these really bad arguments. And I remember thinking, I just want to go to bed. And I'd roll over, and man, the Holy Spirit, it was like he would just kick me right in the gut. He's like, boy, you better get out of that bed. And you better go talk. And I thought, I didn't do anything, Holy Spirit. It's that woman you gave me. She needs to change. I remember that. The first big blowout we ever got into about four months in our marriage is a huge fight. And I remember I got so mad. I knock something off of the table. I walk out the door. I slam, super dramatic, slam the door. And I go all the way to my car. I get in my car. I'm like, I'm going to leave. I don't know where I'm going, but I'm going to leave just for a couple hours to make, let her know how serious I am about this. I'm going to let her know. And I get in the car. And immediately, <laughs> God's like, where are you going? I'm like, well, God, she's wrong. She's wrong. I don't know. You need to change her. I remember praying. God, you just need to change her. She's just not, yeah, she, she's wrong. She needs forgiveness, Lord. Help her. Help her, Jesus. And I remember God broke that silence very quickly, very sternly, and I realized I had one option, and it was to get out of that car. He said, little boy, you need to go back upstairs, and you need to learn how to be a man. And I said, okay. All right, and I walked in. I'm sorry. Can we be friends again? I apologize for being so stupid. <laughs> it's important to communicate. The times you feel like talking, you need to push through. Don't settle and don't leave it for the next day because that hurt and that resentment, it will just begin to build up. Something might come up the next day, you won't talk about it. All of a sudden you'll think, oh, it's good, we're fine, but you're not. It's building up and it's a ticking time bomb, okay? So deal with it. I'll even give you scripture. Ephesians 4, 26 through 27. Look at this. Ephesians 4 there says, and don't sin by letting anger control you. It's not a sin to feel anger. The sin is when you let anger control your actions. Don't let the sun go down while you are still angry. Do not let anger carry the next day. Why? Look here. For anger gives a foothold to the devil. You know what it means to get a foothold? You ever gotten a foothold in a door, like in a doorway? Once you get your foot in, that door's not closing. In fact, just the opposite. You're going to be able to work your way in. And that is exactly what happens when you have unresolved anger in your marriage and you decide to go to bed. You are giving the devil a foothold to break down that door and rob you blind. Okay? 
So what are are we going to do? We're going to communicate. We're not going to go to bed angry. You might even be yelling at each other. We're not going to bed angry. Take it. I love you. You're like, man, this is okay. I didn't know we could yell that. That sounds good. Let's do that. Arguments are okay when they remain respectful. It means you are communicating. A bad sign is when it's gone silent. That's when you need to start worrying. When y'all don't care enough to even talk about it anymore, ooh, that's bad. That is so bad. Look, let me tell you something. Sydney and I, the first couple of years of our marriage, we were tough to be around because we fought everywhere. We fought in public. We fought at restaurants. We fought at church. We fought everywhere. And we didn't care. We didn't care who was around. Oh, no, we're going to have this out right now. We're going to fight. But one thing everyone could tell you if they said, do Matt and Sydney love each other? Oh, you bet they do. My goodness, they're nuts. They are crazy about each other. They will straight up yell at each other in the middle of a parking lot, and then by the end of it, they're hugging and kissing each other, and it's like, oh, okay, I guess they worked it out. Why? Because we were stubborn, right? We had to learn better habits of communication, but, dude, we loved each other. So we were going to get this sorted out. We ain't going to stop talking, right? It's, we, we, I mean, we might be bleeding, but we're going to figure it out, okay? We're going to work through it. A bad sign is when it goes silent. Another bad sign is when one spouse, one person in the relationship may use their size or strength to silence the other. See, I realized something early on in our marriage that I didn't really think much about before. I'm kind of a big dude. And when I bow up and Sydney's sitting right there, I'm way bigger than her. So I, I saw myself getting angry, and I remember I lost control, which didn't happen often. I, I, I'm pretty good at controlling myself, but Sydney knew how to push those buttons. And I lose control, and I'm screaming. I mean, screaming. And I've got a very loud voice. And I remember catching just a look on her face, and she was so scared. I belittled her, and I scared her. I, I made her cower. And man, I felt terrible. I thought, I'll never yell at you like that again. See, God doesn't take pleasure in that, guys. He doesn't like that. He doesn't like when you belittle people with your words or when you intimidate somebody to do what you want them to do. That's not being a good husband. That's a fact. That's being a terrible human being. Just letting you know. I might have just made you mad, and that's fine. I don't care. Come at me, bro. All right? I'm telling you the truth. God's not pleased with that, so stop it. Stop screaming at your kids. Stop. Trust me. I was a youth pastor for over 10 years. You know how many teenagers I talked to? They said, crying. <laughs> What's wrong? Oh, screaming at me. What was it about? What'd you do? I don't know. No idea. It didn't work. I'm just telling you, I'm telling you, get to their heart, get to their heart. We'll go with some scripture here. Sorry, that got a little serious. Let's all just cheer up. It's okay. It's all right. I still love you. Colossians 4, 6, throw it up here. Let every word you speak be drenched with grace and tempered with truth and clarity. Man, if we did that with every word we spoke. Let every word you speak be drenched with grace and tempered with truth and clarity, for then you will be prepared to give a respectful answer to anyone who asks about your faith. That's how Jesus wants us to represent him. That's how he wants his word. So in your marriage, one of the most important places to represent Christ, that is how you should be speaking to one another. That is how you should be speaking to your kids. Drenched with grace and tempered with truth and clarity. Now I get it. Sometimes we lose it. I totally understand. Totally get it. But make sure if you do, you go back and you apologize. You say, sweetheart, I'm sorry, I lost it. Hey, buddy, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have yelled like that. You know, honey, I'm sorry, can I please come back in the room? (laughs) Please let me inside. Colossians 3, 18 through 21, throw that up there. Let every wife be supportive and tenderly devoted to her husband. Ooh, that sounds nice. For this is a beautiful illustration of our devotion to Christ. That's beautiful. Let every husband be filled with cherishing love for his wife. And never be insensitive toward her. Other other translations say never deal with her harshly. I can't tell you how many times I've been in Walmart and I hear somebody tearing off into their spouse and I just think, oh my gosh. Like I'm thinking, can I say something? I don't think I can, but I'm just going to stare instead. (laughs) I'm thinking, are you for real right now, bro? Dude, you need to look in the mirror. You are blessed. My goodness. Yelling at her like that. Let the children respect and pay attention to their parents. Oh, yes. 
For all the parents, they said amen, right? Amen. Let the children respect and pay attention to their parents. And everything for this pleases our Lord Jesus. And fathers, talking to dads again, don't have unrealistic expectations for your children or else they may become discouraged. Look, if you got little kids, I want to remind you of something. They're little kids. They're learning. They're going to break stuff. They're going to mess stuff up. They're going to do things the wrong way. It happens. See, the one thing I loved about my dad is when I mess something up, he would never get mad about me, at me for messing something up. The only time he would get mad at me is if I didn't come and ask him for help. That was it. Why didn't you come ask me for help? Oh, I thought you were going to be upset at me. I'm not going to be upset. I just want to help you, right? Use your words. Use your words. Get to the heart of the issue. We don't want our children, our wives, to be discouraged by what we said. Husbands, declare the blessings of God over your wife and over your children. You may not see the behavior of what you are declaring, but declare it in faith. I can't tell you how many times in that first year, second year, third year of our marriage, I declared things over Sydney that I was not seeing. I was like, Lord, she is a very sweet wife. Hallelujah. She says good things to me. Lord, she will do the dishes. Oh, praise God. <laughs> Feeling the spirit. <laughs> But I began to declare, and the more and more I would declare, the more and more I would pray, and the more and more I would be sensitive with how I dealt with it, the more I would start to see behaviors change because she trusted and respected me. And the same thing with her. Lord, please let him stop being so stupid and just listen to me. Just know that I need to, I need to talk. I need to speak. Let him listen. It's so important to allow your spouse or children to communicate about what is going on or what they are experiencing. I want you to understand something. Truth, perception is truth to the person who perceives it. Okay? So when your wife, guys, and I'm going to give you some good advice here. When your wife tells you, you hurt my feelings, okay, that's a very real thing. Her feelings were hurt. That means from her perception, what you did was hurtful. It doesn't matter if you think, well, I didn't mean it that way. I know, I say that all the time. Well, I didn't mean it that way. It doesn't matter. That's the way she perceived it. So what do we do? We go back and say, hey, I didn't mean it that way. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for make how I made you feel. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Help me to not do it again. What do I need to not say? Or what do I need to say? Vice versa. Perception, right? What is he perceiving that you're doing, ladies? What is he perceiving? What is he seeing? What does it tell him? Is he a priority to you? Is he important to you, and are you showing him that? I learned something very, we're going through the foster care training that we're doing right now, uh, and all this stuff, you know, we've learned about all sorts of children, situations that they've gone through, horrible trauma, all sorts of things. So we've been what's called trauma trained. And so what's amazing is, is the director we were sitting with that's over the agency we're with, she was telling us about trauma, and the fact that trauma, it's been scientifically proven, trauma has to come out of the mouth. It has to come out of the mouth. That's how you get relief from it. So it's either going to come out through screaming. It's going to come out through you throwing up. It's going to come out through you talking. Whatever it is, it has to come out of your mouth. And the human body can only take so much pain. So what happens is, is you will then hit this point where you, what we call a meltdown. And all of a sudden you're screaming and yelling and you are totally out of control. What is it? It's the pain that's inside of you trying to work its way out. So you need to be guided on how do I deal with this. Let me, let me show you how the Bible tells us. See, it's, it's funny. You've got pain and you need to talk about it. And we talk about this kind of stuff. We talk about therapists. We talk about going to the therapy. And people frown at that, especially in, in, in like religious communities. They're like, oh, you don't need oh, you don't need therapy. Let me tell you something. Yes, you do. I know some of y'all. You need therapy. <laughs> I need therapy. All right? You know how great it is to go talk to somebody that legally cannot talk to anybody else about what I just told them? Oh, that's wonderful. That is great. Because sometimes I just need to talk. I got to get it out. I got to process it. And that's how we do it. That's how we were created. Trauma comes out of the mouth scientifically. And I remember she was asking me about this. She's like, why is that? And this scripture came to mind immediately when she asked me. And I thought, you know what? That's a biblical thing. Let me show you. Let's throw up the next verse. We see a biblical this of, of the connection of our mouth and our heart. Throw up uh, Luke 6, 45. The good person out of the good treasure of his heart produces good. And the evil person out of his evil treasure produces evil. For out, here we go. For out of the abundance of the heart, his what speaks? Mouth. That is a biblical principle. Out of the, in that heart, it I'm not talking about your physical, right? I'm talking about your soul, who you are, the center of who you are. It's like your mouth is that, that pressure valve, that pressure release valve. It's going to come out of your mouth, and it needs to. That's why communication is so important. Throw up Romans 10, 8 through 10. Next verse. It says, but what does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. 
That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. If you confess with your mouth and you believe with your heart, are you seeing it? It's very connected. For with the heart, one believes and is justified. And with the mouth, one confesses and is saved. You got to understand, you got to talk. You got to communicate. Even in your relationship with God, you got to talk. You say, well, God knows what I'm thinking. Talk. Tell him. It's good for you. It will help you. And when you talk, you're giving him access to bring healing. When you communicate, you're giving him access. James 5, 16. I got more of this. I want to make sure you know this is biblical. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be what? Healed. What do you have to do? Confess. How do you confess? With your mouth. The prayer of a righteous person has, it has great power as it is working. 2 Corinthians 6, 11 through 13 says, We have spoken freely to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open. How do we know their heart was wide open? Why? Because they spoke freely. Their heart is wide. Why? They spoke freely, heart wide open. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted in your own affections. In return, I speak as to children, widen your hearts also. What is he saying? Talk to us. Tell us what is happening. Tell us what you're experiencing. Widen your heart. See, guys, we we struggle with this in our relationships. It's hard for us to talk sometimes. But if you do, you're going to find a lot of relief And you're going to find that once your wife begins to understand how you really feel because you're talking, not just because, well, I'll bring home the bacon. That better be good enough, right? I put food on the table. That's great. You are called to be a provider. You bet. In fact, it says the person that doesn't provide for his family is worse than the heathens. Worse than the heathens. Wow, I got that out real quick. Worse than the heathens. But you got to talk. She needs that emotional connection from you. And you might not realize it, but you need it too. We got to talk. We got to say this. Many struggle with communicating, especially in their prayer times. This is one thing I've noticed. In our prayer times, people will pray and they'll say, man, I just, yeah, I prayed. Did you pray about it? Yeah, I prayed. And this is what they meant by pray. God, can you help me? Make it stop. Okay. Goodbye. Did you pray? God, I need this, this, and this. Okay, see you next time. See you at church. Bye. Bye. Listen, this is how you pray. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me show you. You pray until the burden you feel has been lifted. That is how you pray. That means you stay in that closet, on your bed, wherever you're at, until you say, God, I have not felt the problem. Leave me. I still feel the burden. I need you to take the burden for A, B, C, D, E. Whatever it is, say it. Speak it out of your mouth. That is how you get relief. I just showed you in Scripture. It's time to start communicating. It's time to start talking. Listen, you might be in this room, and you might have experienced some really terrible things. Somebody might have done some horrible things to you. I'm going to be real with you. If you do not start talking, if you do not start, find someone you can trust, whether it's in this community, which I would hope you could find somebody here that loves you and wants to listen, and your secret is safe from them, whether it's therapy, whatever it is, your prayer time for sure You need to start talking about what happened because that's how you're going to get deliverance. That's how you're going to get healing. You got to talk about it. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Communication is so important. Bow your heads real fast. We're going to pray. Now, I'm on a time crunch. I've already gone two minutes over, so I'm going to make this quick. But I'm going to pray over you. But today, if you say, man, I've got some issues. I just need somebody to pray with you. We're going to have some prayer partners in the back. They'll be ready to pray with you. So before you leave, definitely grab, prayer, grab some prayer. Do not leave without it. But I just want to pray over you. That one, that you've, you've grasped the importance of communication today. You've grasped how important it is for your relationship. And you start looking at how do you communicate. Sometimes I challenge people, take a recorder, turn it on, leave it on in your house the whole day with you and your wife, and see how you talk to each other. If you would catch yourself in the way you sound when some of these arguments, man, you would realize, ooh, That's not how I want to come off. So I'm going to pray. Father, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus, we just give you the marriages in the room, the relationships in the room, all the single people in the room, Father. Lord, God, everything they're going through, Father, if there is trauma, if there is pain, Lord, that they would know they can trust you to talk to you about it. 
God, that they would find somebody here in this community that they can trust. Lord God, that they would share their heart with them and say, hey, I'm going through this. And this happened to me and I need prayer and I need love and I need support because my heart is overwhelmed and I need to communicate. So, Father, I pray you give us wisdom in the words we say. Lord, as, as husbands and as fathers in this room, God, I pray that we would declare life over our wives, over our children. We would stop treating them harshly, and we'd stop intimidating them with our words, but we would start speaking life into them. Father, that we would steer the ship in a right direction, a direction headed towards you, headed towards love and purpose and hope. Lord, change us. Change me. Help me to be a better father. Help me to be a better husband. Give me the better words to say when I need them. And Father, sometimes help me to hold my tongue when I don't need to speak. But Lord, when I need to speak, give me the boldness to do it and to do it the right way. Father, we thank you and we just give you all the praise and all the glory. And in Jesus' name, everybody said.